Hi guys, in this video we'll be having an introduction to inorganic ions, calcium ions, sodium ions, potassium ions, hydrogen ions, ammonium ions, nitrate ions, hydrogen carbonate ions, phosphate ions, and then we'll finish with a summary. So among all of the other different molecules that the body requires to function, inorganic ions should not be overlooked because they're very important for our function. So an inorganic ion is basically any charged atom or molecule or charged particle that falls into two different categories. We can have cations, which are anything that's positively charged, so it has a positive charge overall, and we can have anions, which are negatively charged, and there are different types of each of these. So just like organic molecules, where organic molecules tend to be based around carbon, the inorganic ions are essential for life as well, for various reasons. So firstly, we can see that they're components in various biological molecules. So for example, in the molecule of DNA, essential to its structure are phosphate ions. Another example is in the transport molecule of haemoglobin, we find various ions of iron, Fe2+. So these are just a couple of examples of where we can see them as a component of other biological molecules. They're also involved in other key biological processes like respiration, which is carried out by all cells of any organism. So remember, respiration is where we take molecules like glucose and we combine it with molecules of oxygen. And in doing so, we produce two side products, which are carbon dioxide and water. And the important product we make from respiration is ATP. And often inorganic ions are used at various stages of this reaction, for example, in the enzymes. And we can also class inorganic ions as not only being cations or anions, but they can be classed as macronutrients which are like main elements, and micronutrients, or trace elements. So a macronutrient is basically describing a nutrient required by an organism's cells, which is quite large. For example, a nitrate ion, which is quite a large ion. And on the other hand, we can have a micronutrient, which is quite a small nutrient in organic ion. For example, iron, or Fe2+, which is a lot smaller. So what do these terms mean? Well, a macronutrient is needed by an organism in a larger quantity than a micronutrient. And you can remember this because micro means smaller or small, whereas macro tends to mean larger. So this would be the quantity needed in relative for a macronutrient. For example, an ion needed in lots of amounts. And this would be perhaps the size relative for a micronutrient. And the reason we call micronutrients trace elements is because we tend to only need a tiny, tiny trace amount in our diets or from the soil or whatever the organism gets its food from in order to make up this amount. And inorganic ions are really important. If certain organisms do not manage to acquire enough of a particular inorganic ion, then they become what we call deficient. So some people are known to have iron deficiency, some people have potassium deficiency, and any time we're particularly deficient in an inorganic ion, we can see particular symptoms start to arise. For example, plants, which are deficient in potassium, for example, start to lose functions in their cell walls, and they start to wilt. This is just an example of one of the features we can see. So calcium ions are a very important inorganic ion for lots of different organisms. And the formula for calcium is given as Ca, which is the chemical symbol, so big C, little a, and it's always got a two plus charge in its ion. This makes it, therefore, a cation because it's positively charged. Calcium is important in lots of structures, and it helps mainly harden particular body parts, like the bones, the teeth, and exoskeletons. The bones and teeth are obviously found in lots of organisms, and they must be very hard for withstanding mechanical forces and support, and the teeth for chewing and lots of mechanical forces too. And the exoskeleton of particular creatures like crabs or some insects helps to make it nice and protective and overall a hard material. Calcium doesn't only have a structural role, it helps with the movement of organisms too. In the synapses, it can regulate transmission of impulses from one neuron to the next neuron. So here's just a vague diagram of one neuron connecting to the next one, with the neuron being the cell of the nervous system. So neuron one and neuron two. And the electrical impulse that's traveling needs to be sent across a gap. And across the synapse, we use calcium in order to allow this to happen. So it's very important in transmitting communication across the body through the nervous system. 
Calcium is also the most important ion in stimulating muscle contraction. So in muscle contraction, the muscle has to shorten its length, and by doing so, it moves one bone relative to another bone, and therefore allows us to move our joints. And the crucial ion in allowing this shortening to happen is calcium, and muscles need a lot of this calcium to work. Calcium also has some sort of managerial roles in the body too. It can help regulate protein channels, and this affects the permeability of cell membranes. So here's a cell membrane being cut through here. And the cell membrane can contain lots of different channel proteins and carriers. So this is an example of an ion channel. And when the ion channel is open, it can allow particular ions to flow through in either direction. And sometimes calcium ions, when they're present, represented by this green ion, can help regulate the channels by closing them or opening them and affecting the permeability of the cell membrane to these other ions. So it's kind of a guard or a regulator for cell membrane permeability. A lot of enzymes in the body are activated by calcium as well, so it's also a key regulator in biological reactions. So remember, enzymes are particular proteins which catalyze important reactions in the body, and there are a whole massive range of these enzymes. And in order to work, they need a substrate to fit with the enzyme. And some of these enzymes will only be turned on when the calcium ions bind to the enzyme, allowing it to work properly, and then the substrate's able to bind effectively. So calcium regulates enzyme activity. Calcium has a role in the blood as well. The presence of calcium ions is also necessary for the formation of blood clots. So as blood runs through the blood vessels in most animals, if we injure the blood vessel wall, blood starts leaking out. And in order to stop this leakage, we have to form a blood clot around the damaged area. And an important component in forming these blood clots is the calcium ion. So without calcium, it's very hard to form blood clots. And finally, calcium has an important role in plants. It's important for the development of the middle lamella, which lies in between the plant cell walls. So remember, each plant cell has its own cell wall, and these cell walls need to connect to each other via these structures known as the middle lamella. And the calcium ions are needed in the process of forming these structures, and without this, these structures would be very weak, and the plant would lose its general structural integrity. So as you can see, calcium has many different roles in both animals and plants, and it's a very important inorganic ion. Sodium ions are a crucial ion in many organisms, and the formula for the sodium ion is large n, little a, with a plus. So it's got a one charge sign, and therefore sodium is a cation, because it's positively charged. Sodium ions have a variety of roles. They play a key role in regulating osmotic pressure, and this is important in many types of cells. It helps plant cells remain turgid. So plant cells want to be swollen up and turgid so that they can give the plant some sort of structure and upright rigidity. So we describe the cell as being turgid. And the way that it does this is that when the plant cell is full of sodium, it lowers the water potential of the cell enough to draw water in from the outside. So water is drawn into the cell and this is what causes the swelling and this makes the cell turgid. Sodium is also important in regulating the absorption of water in the kidney. So the kidney filters blood out, and when it filters out sodium, taking back that sodium can help water follow the sodium and therefore take back some of that water that we might otherwise lose. One of sodium's most important roles is in, in the transmission of nervous impulses. So here's a neuron, which is one of the cells of the nervous system and the neuron is responsible for sending electrical impulses from one end to the other. And this is how we communicate messages through the body. And the sodium ion is really important in allowing these impulses to move along. Sodium ions also help in maintaining the pH of the body. And the pH of the body has to be maintained at around seven because of crucial enzymatic reactions. And if the pH goes too low or too high, this can be very dangerous. So sodium helps to maintain this. And finally, sodium ions are used in active transport, particularly for glucose and amino acids in the intestine. So if this is the lumen or the space of the intestine, which is full of our digesting material from food, and this is the inside of a cell, in order to absorb glucose molecules, we have to absorb sodium with it through a particular carrier protein. So the carrier protein lies in the membrane of the cell, and it takes the glucose from one side to the other so that we can absorb the sugar that we've eaten. However, in order to do this, sodium ions have to be taken through with the carrier protein 
with the glucose. Without this, the glucose can't be absorbed, and this goes for the same with amino acids too. So sodium is important in getting a lot of our food into cells. Potassium ions are again a very important inorganic ion, and the formula for potassium ions is a K plus, and therefore, because they're positively charged, they are cations. It's got similar roles to sodium in that potassium plays an important role in nervous transmission. So again, the neurons and the cells of the nervous system have to send electrical impulses from one end to the other for communication, and it relies on both sodium and it relies on potassium as well, but they use these for different functions. And similarly with sodium, it's used for osmotic potential as well. So potassium inside plant cells can draw water in to the plant cell, and this allows it to become turgid. And as well as sodium, it can assist active transport. So active transport is when we have particular proteins in the membrane, which move a substance from a low concentration to where it's in a high concentration. And in doing this process, active transport uses ATP, and the potassium ions can help in doing this for particular substances. And just like sodium, it has a role in maintaining the pH of the body, which should maintain it around 7. And potassium is also needed by plants to help grow healthy leaves and the flowers so that they can function properly. And often plants absorb potassium from the soil, which can then grow to lead healthy leaves and healthy flowers. And potassium actually plays a role in synthesizing proteins and glycogen, and it helps in the breakdown of glucose. So in forming glycogen, we have to take individual glucose molecules and form a polymer. So this is a polysaccharide. And this uses the presence of potassium ions in various different enzyme reactions. And it's also used in breaking down glucose in respiration. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.